Hey, I'm trying out something new for once in my life. Games right now are kind of boring and I still want to make YouTube videos. So another thing that I like to do besides spending my numbing hours on games is actually watching a lot of TV shows and movies. Right now I'm really interested in the whole indie animation stuff since there actually are a lot of good shows and animations out there right now. So to test the waters of this whole commentary thing, I'm going to try and explain Internation Cube in a nutshell. If you don't know what Internation Cube is, I'll quickly explain it. It's a three episode unfinished series made by Liam Vickers. Now if this name sounds familiar to you, or you've been on the internet recently, you would know that this is the same guy that has created and written another show called Murder Drones. I personally enjoy this show as well, and it actually got me into the whole indie animation scene on YouTube. Maybe I'll talk about it at some point. Who knows. Anyways, onto the actual show. In the first episode, we're thrown right into a chase scene, and introduced to our main characters. This is Max, a 15 year old that somehow managed to sneak into a government facility and steal a super secret weapon. As a result of this, he is now being hunted down by government agents. One of the agents points a gun at him. So as an attempt not to be shot, he decides to start swerving which results in him falling off his bike. Gonna be honest, that was kinda stupid. He starts running and is somehow still ahead of the agents while they have cars. As an attempt not to be killed, he calls for the weapon that he stole. This is Icon, a sentient Minecraft cube, and is apparently the origin of all evil. Icon gets out of Max's bag and immediately injects him with an explosive. Her plan is for Max to get captured so she can detonate the bomb that's in him from the inside. While the two are arguing, a helicopter flies up right above them. Because Max is still mourning the loss of his bike that he destroyed himself, he asks Icon to make him another. So Icon shoots up right into the helicopter, destroys it, and kills everyone inside. Damn. In episode 2, we're thrown into a flashback and introduced to who is potentially the antagonist of the show. A young girl named Carrie Bunnan. Apparently she had to go with her dad to his job, which is at the government facility that is keeping Icon. Carrie is set up in the break room while her father works. Next thing you know, the lights start flickering and you start hearing an alarm. She turns back to her coloring book and sees little drops falling from the ceiling. Apparently Icon escaped. These little drops turn into tiny cubes. When Kiri touched the cube, it started fusing itself to her hand, and as she tried to get the cube off, it ended up ripping off all the flesh from her hand, just leaving the bone. Then the cube takes control of her. She then wakes up in her bed in the modern day when the show is taking place, and she goes through a normal morning routine of taking a shower, brushing her teeth, and feeding her cat dino nuggets. We then are brought back to the point from the first episode where Icon destroys a helicopter and kills several people. The remaining agents that are alive just back the f off. Would you look at that? Only three quarters a day. Oh, for yeah, sure. Gas for sure. We gotta fill back. that up. <sighs> Cannot be too careful. While Icon is asleep on the side of the road, Max decides to start measuring her finger for whatever reason. Icon wakes up to Max being on top of her, and we get possibly one of the best awkward silence moments in any animation I've seen. Icon immediately gets uncomfortable and Max has a horrible job of reassuring her that he is not trying to experiment on her. Which is why this was just purely... sexual? As a result, Max is slashed in the face with Icon thinking that he has feelings for her. That's kinda it for episode 2. We start episode 3 with Max and Icon entering a diner, which is in the middle of nowhere. Max tells Icon he's gonna go use the bathroom and asks her to keep watch. That's a restroom. While Max is walking, the camera pans by this guy in a hood. He's important later in the episode. And we get a little flashback to like, I don't know, three hours ago, where Max and Icon are just talking. Max starts drawing pictures of eggs in the sand. Icon, noticing this, tries to make an egg, and it goes horribly wrong. Icon then gets upset that she couldn't make an egg. Max tries to cheer her up by drawing more food on the ground. They have a bonding moment. You know how cringe trying to bond with me over this menial thing is, right? We're back at the diner and Icon decides to give herself an actual full body. The waitress walks out and then the two start flirting. I love you. 
Max actually isn't in the bathroom taking a piss and instead checking his blood for contaminants. He then decides to call Kiri because apparently they're working together and we immediately see her f***ing kill someone. What the f***? We see Kiri waiting for the bus. Also, kind of a nitpick, but if this show is taking place in America, doesn't that mean the bus should be on the other side of the road or facing the other way if it's on that part of the road? Anyways, we see Kiri writing on her desk and the kid in front of her notices. This is Kofi. He's a f***ing conspiracy theorist. While he's getting yelled at by the teacher, he notices Kiri is missing. She decided to go downstairs into a closed off room. She then picks up the call from Max. We see Icod staring at the food, only to look up and realize that the hooded guy from earlier also has his own sentient Minecraft cube. Still in the bathroom, Max is actually having second thoughts about the plan because apparently he feels sympathy towards Icon. Now what is this plan? My guess is Icon was the original Minecraft cube and she was able to make variants of herself and spread them to other people. Kiri was unlucky and got caught in the crossfire. Now wanting revenge, she asks Max to go to the government facility so he can get Icon Bring her to her, so she can kill her. Shit, Kiri even admits that she will enjoy hearing Icon scream while she peels her apart. It's not human, like us. But, I bet it'll still scream when I peel it apart. It will start telling the truth one way or another. Back in the main diner, we learn that this guy just came back from an anime convention. <laughs> I apologize if you now want to go deaf. They then decide to blow up the diner. Max is still in the bathroom and is only alive because the door is apparently made of titanium. These nerds do a whole anime opening, and we're kind of just left wondering what the f*** we were watching. What in the fresh weeb hell? And that's it. The series ends here. Now there is a chance that this show can come back, but Liam's kind of preoccupied at the moment, and he also said that he doesn't actually plan to finish it and that he only made it as storyboard practice, which I guess is alright. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please do consider leaving a like and subscribing. This whole commentary thing is still pretty new to me, and I actually did have a lot of fun writing and editing this video. I guess if this video does well enough, I might make another in a nutshell video for another indie animation or just a movie or a game. I don't know yet. Anyways, see you in the next one.